On my handout, I have a section on Bing and a section on Google. Let's work on Google now, and you're going to see very similar to what we did on Bing. We need to add a site and verify the site. It'll look almost the same, and the point of this is to get now more data from Google, which is the, higher, which is the bigger search engine. Unfortunately, with Google, the confusion of it is that it is very schizophrenic. There are lots of things to look at. Bing, which was invented later, managed to consolidate all of this data into one portal, Bing Toolbox. Right? Everything about Bing is found here on bing.com slash toolbox. With Google, we have to go to either google.com slash webmasters and or google.com slash analytics. Two different screens, two different setup procedures. And that's not even taking into account AdSense and the brand new Analytics Pro, which I haven't learned about yet because there's only so many hours in the day to learn about something. But Google Analytics Pro is a new thing. And I have to be cynical and say probably the paid version is better than the free version. But we'll use the free version. And so we need to set both of these up. I'm going to get back to Webmasters a little bit later because Analytics is the one that's a little harder to set up. Webmaster Tools is exactly the same basically as Bing Toolbox. We'll add your website. We'll ask you to verify in either of the ways that you did, the way I showed you if I helped you individually. But I'm going to go over to Google Analytics, because this is the big famous one. Before, before this class, how many of you have heard of Google Analytics? Okay. How many of you before this class have heard of Google Webmaster Tools? Almost no one. How many of you have heard of Google Search Console before this class? Almost a few, a few people. Analytics, then, is the big famous one, and that's the one you're usually going to spend the most time on. That's the one for Google that's going to show you where's your traffic coming from, how long have people stayed on my site, what's the most popular sites, what's the most popular web browser that people use. A lot of scary detail. I mean, a lot of valuable detail for us as, a, as web marketers, as web designers, as, as someone that has a website, analytics. So go back to your web browser and let's go to the address google.com slash analytics. A-N-A-L-Y-C-S. Google.com slash analytics. It's right there on the handout. You can click on it also. Google Analytics. So this is the whole family of analytics premium which I need to research what it does exactly. Anometry, which I don't even know what it does. Analytics normal for free. Analytics for mobile apps. If I make an app, an Android app, uh, an iPhone app, I can attach Google Analytics to it and I can see what are people doing on my app. That's obviously much more advanced, but we've got that. Tag Manager. Well, that's helping me figure out keywords. I forgot to say this, but let me back up very briefly on Bing. Um, on Bing, if I, if you noticed, I have I have the keywords, and I have a little dollar symbol next to them. That's the pay per click that I mentioned on day one. If I want to really get found by a particular keyword, for example, barbacoa, which is barbecue, lamb barbecue. It tells me here, average cost per click, five cents on the main line, five cents on the sidebar. We saw in Bing that when you search, you get the main line, the main results, and you get side results. Each of them costs a little different. Five cents per click. So if I put a budget of $100, and remember Bing is giving me $100 to sign up. If I put a budget of $100 and use that keyword, barbacoa, that keyword will appear for people, impressions, but then when people click on them, conversions, it'll cost me five cents. So I get a lot that I can get from that hundred dollars. Notice, however, people are, other companies are, are bidding, are offering to pay a little bit more to use that, uh, that keyword, ten cents. It does. Uh, they spend more, it pushes them up, they get more results. 
these are five cents, ten cents. Some of them may be more expensive. It's not surprising to find some that are twenty-five cents, fifty-five cents, a dollar, a dollar twenty-five. If I'm trying to get found by web design, that's probably five dollars a click because there's so much competition. But this is how you can engage in the PPC pay-per-click. I'm gonna buy that keyword, I'm gonna get viewed more, I have twenty dollars to spend, I can get pretty far twenty dollars because it's five cents a click, but as that keyword gets more popular and my competitor instead starts to bid fifteen cents, well that twenty dollars is gonna reach a little less if I've got competition. Google Analytics and Google Webmaster Tools will tell me that as well. How much does it cost to advertise on Google? With that exact same keyword, it may be five cents on Bing, but it may be a dollar twenty-five on Google because it's the largest search engine. Here on Google Analytics, at the top right corner, click Sign In, and it says, "Which would you like to sign into?" We want plain old Google Analytics, classic Google Analytics. It will ask you to either sign in or sign up. How many of you currently have a Gmail email address? You can use that Gmail to log in, and then we'll set this up, or you can create an account. Unfortunately, this is what happens when you're the when you're the 800-pound gorilla. If you choose to create an account, you have to create a Gmail account. You cannot use your existing AT&T account, your existing Yahoo, your existing Hotmail. They used to let you do that, but when you make the rules, you make the rules. So if you don't have a Gmail account, you need to create one here. Take a moment to do that. If you do have Gmail, just click Sign In, and we'll proceed in a moment. If you create one, it's going to ask you for a bunch of info. You'll get an email link to confirm. Actually, let me check something here. You can try to use an existing, but I don't think it'll let you. If it does, great. If not, you have to set one up. But go ahead then and either sign in or sign up. I'm going to log in. I'm going to log in to see how it how it looks. Go ahead and sign in. I believe so. Uh, let me just confirm your screen. This is where it always is confusing for everyone because my screen is going to look different than, than everyone because yeah, some of you are going to see three icons. Yeah. If you see three icons and then it says sign up, click sign up. It's going to look a little different, so click that sign up button. It's going to ask you a bunch of information about my account. I'll show you what that screen looks like in just a moment. So if you don't have a Google account, you have to sign up, right? Yes. I never use my Google account. I just use it for an app. Is it gmail.com? That's right. <laughs> Sign in. Uh, if it asks you for an, uh, a website and says, just wait a moment, I'll show you what that means. So if you manage to create the account, 
then it's going to give you three icons and a sign up. Click that sign up, and it'll take you a screen, take you to a screen that looks something like this: new account. Well, you, oh, I thought I created the account. So there's a lot of terminology here that doesn't make sense until you start using Google Analytics. It's very powerful. Honestly, it's very complex. I could teach, you know, four weeks just on Google Plus, uh, not uh, Google Analytics. I can do it for Google Plus also, but Google Analytics can be very complex. We only have this amount of time to work on it. But here's what it's asking us here, new account. What this means is this. When you fully set it up, look at how mine looks. I've got a folder for each client because I can track a lot of data. I can track the data on the website. I can track the data on YouTube. I can track data on other web properties that the client has. So it's a good idea for me to organize a client into a folder. Uh, analytics calls a folder an account. So for me it makes sense. I have several accounts. I have several clients. For yourself, you're still going to see the terminology of account, but you are the account. Your web presence is the account, is the folder. And inside of a folder, I can then have multiple properties. This client here, that's an account, a folder, and then I have sub properties. This is the data for the YouTube. This is the data for the main site. This is a different YouTube channel. So I can have multiple things that I'm tracking for a client. The top level is account, the bottom ones are properties. So that's what you're seeing here, new account. Number one, track a website or an app, most likely a website. Name of the account, name of the folder. So just put the name of your website, not the address if you want the address, but just the name of your website. I've got Pictures Web Pro Designs. It's the name of my online presence where everything is going to be saved, the folder. And below it is the property website name. This is going to be my main site. I can call this anything I want, main website. Because later on, I want to set this up to track YouTube. I want a YouTube channel eventually. Take the social media class for that. But I want a YouTube channel. That'll get me more traffic. One of the ways we get traffic in my company <coughs> is we made a video, a tech video, that has gone viral. It's got like 17,000 views now and that's getting us traffic from that video back to the site. I want to track that data on YouTube. So this property is, is what are you tracking? I'm saying the main website. Website URL, what's the address of your, of your website? And notice you can either select HTTP or HTTPS. If you've got a secure website, you want to track the data there because it's technically a different website, the insecure version and the secure version. And then you would type in the name of your website. So it's HTTP, the name of my website. Industry category, there's so much data that analytics is going to find uh, that it's trying to guide you to the best data. So if you select one of these industries, it's going to try to show you screenfuls of information that are most relevant to you if you're in the automotive industry, the computer industry, etc. So you can change this later, but try to, if you need to, but try to change, select the best one. I've got a web design company, so maybe the internet one will work for me. Online communities, some of these, you know, there's not every single kind of industry. So try to choose one that fits pretty well. If you don't know, you can just select other. And if there is one that fits, but actually other gives you more features. Again, if you select an industry, it tries to give you the features that you might care about. But if you want every feature, select other. Time zone should be correct. Data sharing. You can turn these on or off. It doesn't matter if you turn them on or off, but this is going to collect a lot of data. 
this is saying, would you like to share this data with these other services? If you don't want to, just turn it off. What are these services? Read the little description, but it doesn't matter if they're on or off. So we can make emails, like suggestions and stuff like that. You mean this right here? Uh, no. This is going to share your data with Google products or benchmarking or technical. That's different than what, than what you've said. Um, you can track a hundred accounts, so everything. Go ahead and click Get Tracking ID. Where do we get that from? Get what? Tracking ID. You click right there, Get Tracking ID. So click Get Tracking ID and then click Accept these terms. These are the things that no one reads but everyone agrees to. Uh, and basically it's saying you're, you're not going to use the product maliciously, you're not going to re reverse engineer the code, all of that good stuff. So click accept. If you don't accept it, you can't use it. That's how modern software is. If you don't accept the terms, you can't use it. There's no really way around it, unfortunately. So click accept. And then on the next screen it gives me the code. There's only one way to set this up, unlike Bing where it says, do you want to do it either way, one, two, or three? Uh, over, on, over on Google Webmaster Tools, which is different than Google Analytics, that one is the one where you can also select, like Bing, those three methods. This one can only be this way. It says, this tracking ID, there's your code. This code, I need to copy and paste it to my site. If I help some of you, and uh, some of you I showed you, you you needed to add your code to the head block of your website. That's what you're going to add to your site. Some of you had a little box that said add Google code. That's where you add that code. Some of you had other methods. Try it those other methods. We're going to do a little one-on-one -on -one help in a moment. But what I want to do is take you to this point. This is the verification. The confusing, one of the many confusing things we'll see with Google Analytics I add my code to my site, but there's no button anywhere that says verify. This is just going to start working automatically. And this particular screen that we're in, we're going to lose it. We've got so much to look at in Google Analytics, we're going to forget where the screen is at. So before you try to do this verification, let me show you this. At the top, we have Home, Reporting, Customization, Admin. Click on Home. That takes you to the screen that you see when you log in. I logged in and I see all of the accounts of my clients. You see one because you just created one. And one of them, in my case, is Victor's Web Pro Designs. You only see one because you, you're probably new to this, you've only got one. The name of your account is right there, which can be edited. Main website, that's what I wrote. And then all website data. So this is the screen where you manage all your properties and accounts. Under reporting, we'll look at this one in a moment, this is where it'll actually show you the data. Let me get back to that one, that's another complex screen. Customization, because you've got so much complexity, you can customize the look of things to only show you the most important reports. And then we've got admin, another complex screen. Three columns, account, property, view. On the left side, this is the top level of settings for the account. And notice on mine, it shows the accounts for all of these clients. You've only got one account, so that's what it should show you at the top. But this is where I can go back in to click on Account Settings and change those little check marks. I can also look at User Management, Filters, History. This will tell me I logged in and I made these changes. I can add more than one user. Me and the other people in my company can log into this account to view the data. If I go to user management and add a new account, they need a Gmail address. And then change history will keep track of who made what changes to, this, to the data. I can trash this if I no longer want this data. Uh, actually, it's under account settings, move to trash can. I accidentally want to undelete it, it'll be under trash can. 
So there's these settings for the main account. I need to press back right there to take me back to the three columns. Notice it focused on one of the columns. Back. Account property view. Under property, I have all of these settings. Because under account, I could track the website, I could track the YouTube, I could track the, the newsletter, all independent. Those all three things are properties. They're going to be found here. I've only got one property, which is the main website. If I've got another client, I've got the YouTube and I've got other properties. I've got this, this account and all of these sub-properties, sub-things that I'm tracking. So under property, a bunch of other settings, many that we don't have a time to get to, such as AdWords and all of this. So don't worry about all of this stuff except for JS Tracking Info. Inside of that, we've got Tracking Code. That's how you get back to your code. If you move away from the screen a little while ago, the way to get back to it is right there. It's under Admin, under Property, JS Tracking Info, Tracking Code. It takes you back here. So I need to copy that code, paste it to my site. There's no Verify button, but there is here, No Data Received. I can send test traffic data. I can try to see, is it working? That's the closest to verify. That button was not there a moment ago. If I did manage to copy that code and paste it to my site, um, and I come back to this screen, eventually it'll say, tracking code found, data received. And then on the last here, we've got view. If I back up with that view, on the website data, that's one of the properties here. If I had a property called YouTube, I could edit the, the view of YouTube. This is all the data that I'm going to see. And again, I could filter it and make groups about it and set goals, all of that. So that's why the admin screen here is very detailed, lots to look at. You don't have time for it all, but you do have at the top right corner, if you click on, um, let's see, where did they put it? Help. That little gear, there it is. On the very top right corner, you have the gear and you have help. You can always get help there. No, this is Google Analytics. And so this is very useful here. On the top right corner, click the gear, click help, phone number. You can call a real person at Google to help you. Because once, uh, once you're a real business, not just someone using Gmail randomly, if you're a real person with a real business, you can contact Google here with a phone number, there's a phone number. Worldwide phone support. You can also do live chat. And uh, th it works. I've helped a client. I was at his store a few months ago, and it was like 11 p.m., and we were trying to resolve a few issues here, and then we called them up. They answered like in one minute. The person stepped us through everything. They fixed what needed to be fixed, and it was done. So. It's very hard to get a hold of some of these companies, especially Facebook and Twitter, and most of the time Google and YouTube and such. But if you've got an analytics account, they, they will pay attention to you there because you're a, potentially you're a business. And potentially you might, wipe, you might want to buy Google AdWords and such to, to get more traffic, so they're very happy to help you. Um, adding your tracking code. Um, let, me, let me go forward and we might have time for it, but uh, again, it was the same sort of process that we did for Bing. You need to copy that code, add it to your site. Um, 
I'm going to move on, however, because I need to show you what's the whole point of this. If you look at reporting, under reporting, you have a bunch of extra screens here and then data. The whole point of analytics is to see this data and to make decisions on what to do, what's working, what's not working. On the left side, you can organize your data under dashboards. You can create shortcuts to view the data quickly. You've got intelligence events, which honestly, for myself, I need to research more on how these fully work. I don't know everything, even though it seems like it. I uh, need to research what that's about. Real time real-time overview, you can see how many people are actually visiting your site right now, from where in the world, and how many times per day and such. That's under real-time overview. You can look at the locations that they're at, all of that stuff. Let's say I don't have any traffic right now, so it's not too useful. But I've got real-time, I've got audience, acquisition, behavior, conversions. You might not have conversions, because what you need to do to have conversions is to go to the admin screen under the view and set goals. I don't have time to talk about it, but that's an extra bit of data you can look at. Under audience, this will tell you who is visiting your site. Acquisition, where are you acquiring them from? Where are you getting that traffic from? And behavior, what are they doing on your website? Let me write some notes right here, remember my notes. Google okay. Analytics. We've got um, audience, who is visiting your site. This will give you so much data, such as location, language, browser, web browser. And we've got acquisition, where are they coming from? Did they come from a search? Did they come from Twitter? Did they come from someone else's blog or an inbound link? All of that acquisition data will be there. And then behavior. What did they do on your site? Meaning, what's the most popular pages? Their uh, breadcrumb path, which is just the industry way of saying what, which way, how did they traverse your website? You started on the home page, went to the about page, went to the shop page. It will give you a path that they took. So that's audience acquisition behavior. The other ones, again, you can look at those on your own, like real time and goals, conversions. But uh, these are the big ones you're going to be looking at. Audience acquisition behavior. And each one of these sections has a, has a lot of screens as well. If I look at audience, if I look at overview for this particular site, for example, I get this chart of the last 30 days. Notice the top right. I can set it to 30 days or 90 days or one year, and I can compare it from this month to last month, this year to last year. So the longer I've got this set up, the more data it'll, it'll pull. It'll gather. Under audience overview, I have these different things here. Um, a little chart here, new visitors as opposed to returning visitors. So most of the time, people coming to the site are new to the site as opposed to return. I cannot tell you if this is a good or bad chart. You have to decide that for yourself. Can you run your business on repeat customers or new customers? It's up to you. This particular business works fine with new customers because this is trying to get new customers to build an audience. They may not 
care that the same customers keep coming back, new customers are good. Or vice versa. This might be a terrible chart. So many new visitors and not enough returning customers, what am I doing wrong? So based on your goals and such, you can decide if that's good or bad. All of these values also. Um, well, some of them. Sessions, which is basically hits. How many times has someone visited your site? In the last time period, 300 times or so. Is that good or bad? I don't know. It depends on your site. Users. This is unique and returning customers because one user could come and see more than one page. Notice these, that's why this user's number is not the same as sessions. And also page views is very high. Because a session is that someone visits your site and sees 10 things or one thing. Both are a session. But a page view is that one person saw seven things on your site or someone saw one thing on your site. So 223 people visited and they saw 524 pages on the site. And that counts returning and existing customers, but then it breaks it down here into details. It also tells you when you hover over it, uh, let's see their oh. official definition, total number of sessions within the date. A session is the period time a user is actively engaged with your site. So if someone visits your site, they actually click stuff, they don't just leave it open, they do something. Pages per session. When someone visits, they, they look at approximately two pages at a time. Is that good or bad? I don't know. Think about it like this. I'm a restaurant. You visit a restaurant website. What's the number one thing you're looking for? The menu. Maybe phone number. And what if you find that quickly in one page or two pages? That's fine. The person found your phone number, they called, they made a reservation. Okay, so then a lower page per session might be okay. What if you're a blogger and you write a lot of blog posts, have a lot of ideas to put out, and I have 1.7 pages per session. People are looking at two pages on average and I've got 40 blog posts. That could be bad for the blogger. People are not sticking around and reading more than one thing. But for a restaurant, that might be great. They saw the two pages that were necessary, the phone number page and the order page. Because a person could have bookmarked the order page and goes to the order page every time they want something and checks out. That's it. They don't have to browse through the site. How long does someone stay on the site? Again, that could be a bad number, that could be a good number. If I'm a blogger and I'm writing 500 words at a time, it's probably going to take more than two minutes to read 500 words. So for the blogger, that time might be terrible. They're not sticking around and reading my posts. But for a restaurant or some other kind of business, that might be just fine. I need only two minutes to go to the site, click buy, and check out, because I've got a saved account. Bounce rate basically is someone visits a page, any page, on your site and leaves before seeing any other page. They visit your page and then they bounce. They leave that page. For some that's terrible, for some it's fine. 63% visit this site, any page, and then leave. Uh, again, if a person has a particular page bookmarked and they go to that one bookmark page and leave, that's fine. But if I've got lots of content, I, I want to show my paintings, and I've got paintings in a section of surreal, realistic and uh, watercolor. I want people to look at more than one page. I want a lower bounce rate. And new sessions. How many people coming to the site are brand new within this time period? 76%. All of this is within this time period. If I change this up on the top to let's say one year of data, Obviously, if you've got this set up for a year, you will get a year of data. If you don't have it set up for a year of data, it won't give you that much. But in a year, then we're getting these rates right here, which again are good and bad depending on what your site is. Nearly 4,000 hits, two pages being viewed at a time with this amount of time for this particular client might be just fine.
and then more demographics. The number one language for this client is English from the U.S. The number one is, what does that mean? English, English Great Britain, so British English, and then C, I'm not sure what that one is, and then ES, Espanol, and then DE, German, Deutsch, English, Spanish from Spain, French, Italian, Russian. Why is that valuable? What if I'm a multilingual website and I'm not getting a lot of traffic from the other language I'm targeting? It's telling me here how effectively I'm, I'm targeting the other languages. Countries, it'll break it down, a lot of traffic from the US, some from India. Unfortunately, I have to say that sometimes when a particular country or region is highly represented, you have to step back and think, for real, why am I getting traffic from India or Russia or, or Serbia or Spain? Bangladesh. Sometimes you're going to get spam traffic, spam bots, and all of that. Malaysia. I'm probably not really targeting at a Malaysian audience. It's only five hits in this time period, but here it breaks it down. 60 hits from India. Why? Maybe I am publishing really good content. On here, I've got a blog post on a very technical subject. India is a tech is a is a tech hub, so that might that might be relevant. But maybe. I'm a bakery that sells products on Main Street. Why am I getting a lot of hits from India? Are they going to travel all the way to, uh, uh, from Mumbai to, to San Diego to buy my great cupcakes? I hope so. And then again, cities. Where am I getting traffic from? San Diego, Nashua, New York, Jaipur, Bengaluru. System browser. The most popular web browser that people use to visit my site is Chrome. With that bit of knowledge, and if I know programming or someone that can program, I can set my site that when someone visits in Safari, that they get something different than someone that visits in Chrome. I can have people that visit in the brand new Microsoft Edge browser get a different screen or a different product based on that. That's technical to set up that's something how you could use that information. And in the real world what's happened negatively is that there was some company, some travel site or hotel booking site, some company that was discovered that when people were visiting their site in Safari the prices were more expensive. Now who on average uses Safari? Mac users. And on average a Mac laptop is a thousand dollars minimal compared to a Windows laptop that could I could get for two hundred dollars so that company figured if they're rich enough to be on Safari on a Mac they can afford to pay a little bit more for these hotels that was discovered and confirmed and the company said ah, there was an error in our code we're sorry and we're gonna fix it <laughs> sure sure there was I'm telling you that could be done but I'm not telling you that's why you want to do it but for a more legitimate reason put special coupons for Safari people, put special coupons or products for Chrome people. This is going to change depending on your site. How do you do it? It's complex. But maybe a plugin will do it, a programmer will do it. Same thing with operating systems. Windows is the most popular, second is Linux, third is Android, Macs and iPhones are on fourth and fifth. Okay, now I know that I'm not getting a lot of traffic from iPhone users um, right here. I got two hits from BlackBerry users. <laughs> Maybe put up a little pop-up that says, "Welcome, BlackBerry users. Use this coupon. You could use. You could. You could afford it. You could use it." Service providers. Just a lot of data there. Operating system for mobile. Android is the number one. iPhone number two. Screen resolution. People would often ask me, "How big should I make my website? How should I design my site?" visual wise I don't know you tell me Google Analytics will tell you there's a relatively small size mobile screens that are visiting the site on a regular basis anything past 720 is HD HD the modern kinds of phones that we have here 720 either vertical or horizontal this one's not HD this one's not HD this one is this one is so the top two hits on mobile were non-HD users. So I don't need to create a huge design with 
very high quality. In my data, it's showing me um, that's not my main demographic. It's the medium end users to low end, perhaps. On yours, it might be the opposite. You may be getting a lot of users that are at, you know, HD quality, uh, 1,900 pixels. Uh, someone did browse the site with like a huge 4K TV, it looks. You know, someone with one of those huge TVs bigger than you visited the site. We'll look at one thing here and then have to move on. Acquisitions. Let's a look at acquisitions overview. Very valuable screen here. Acquisitions overview, top channels. They love to make up all of these. All of these industries love to make up these words. But this is basically where is my traffic coming from? This pie chart shows that the most traffic is direct. Direct means so we've got direct, organic, referral, social. And I don't have it here, but you can also see paid and email. These are the different channels. These are the different avenues that people came to the site. Direct is someone typed the address directly into the browser and went to the site. Someone clicked their bookmark and went directly to the site. So direct, basically, without searching. They visited the site without searching. They went to it directly. They typed victor.com, or they memorized victor.com slash shop, or they have a bookmark on their device or web browser with a, with a link directly to it. Click that, right to the shop. That was a direct. This particular site has 80% traffic, which is 226 hits in this 30-day time period, direct traffic. Next pie chart here is organic search organic searching Google because this is all data from Google searching through Google without you paying for it organic search all of the free stuff that we do all of that tweeting that we do the newsletters, the backlinks that we have. Someone searches, they go to Google, they type authentic Mexican food, the client shows up, they click it, that's a hit from an organic search. That's one of the channels. Referral. A hit from another website or backlinks. Some other website referred my website, meaning some other website has a link to my website, the client's website. So some other website, the Union Tribune, has a link from their reviewing, from their restaurant reviewing critic. They wrote a blog post about the top five restaurants in San Diego, and in their blog post they wrote about the client and has a link back to the client. That's a referral link. Pie chart shows that for this client, it's a smaller chunk, and it was 18 hits, 18 sessions. And then in this case, the last one, 11 sessions, is social. So that's a hit from social media. And we can go further into the data and see exactly which social media. Was it Facebook? Was it Twitter? Was it Pinterest? But in this general view here, you can see all of these in detail. But in general, that's what's happening here. And then, of course, paid if you engage in AdWords, AdWords, which is Google's whole way of paying for keywords and such. Traffic from AdWords. I paid this amount of money. Is it working? It'll tell you here. And if I do set up also newsletters and such, emails, so email newsletters that can be tracked as well. What traffic am I getting from a newsletter?
check my handout because the handout here tells you uh, actually the third handout. We're not going to have time to get to it, but the third handout, backlinks. You want to look at backlinks and in, in there it'll give you advice and such and also it'll tell you where to see the backlinks on these services. It's under acquisition, all traffic referrals. This will give you the list of your backlinks. Acquisition, all traffic referrals, it's in the handout number three. Getting traffic from the college, from this client, from Quora. Traffic coming in in this time period. How many of them were new? Bounce rate, all of that. So lots and lots of data. I could teach Google Analytics for four weeks straight. We're out of time at the moment, unfortunately. Anything that we didn't quite get to, check out my handouts. Check the help section. This class is going to be taught again in a month or two. It's going to be, I think, three weeks, maybe four. You're welcome to come on the day that you, the, the, the further day, you know, come back on the third day or the fourth day, or come back on day one again, and you'll see the, you'll see the lectures again, and the more you see it, the more it can reinforce it. Unfortunately, we're out of time. We'll have very little lab time. There's a class right after us, and we need to get out when they start. Any quick general questions right now? Yes. I go into more detail about what to create of content-wise to get more backlinks. I talk about how to use the backlinks to further get you more links. And we just have more time to really delve into these topics in a little more detail without rushing. Like that analysis that we did on the first day, we can spend more time and talk about it. And I also give like a, a, another handout perhaps on other topics. So it is a little more data and you, uh, more info and usually it's better to take the longer class. When is it? I don't know. Look it up in the catalog. It's on the printed catalog or visit the college's website, sdce.edu. Sometimes I feel like I, 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 I don't know what I'm teaching until I show up. Good thing I, good thing I plan. And um, look it up there, sdce.edu. Thank you for coming. We'll have a little bit of lab time and then we've got to wrap it up on the dot. And see you next time in the future.